Now, how often has it been that when you meet someone, their first question is, where are you from? Or the question may be is, who are you? Tell me a little bit more about yourself. Certainly, in our efforts to want to get to know one another, we want to ask these engaging questions. Who are you and where are you from? Now, years ago, I had the opportunity to go to Salt Lake City, and while I was there, I visited the Mormon Tabernacle, and there, and the Mormons are really big on your ancestry. They want to know a little bit more about where you've come from because they want to pray for your ancestors, praying them into heaven. So ancestry is a big thing. So I spent some time discovering who I am and where I came from. I began to do some research with their guidance and assistance and found out that I'm related to the royal family of Holland. My mother was born in Holland and uh, we're from the family line of the family of the House of Orange, the royal family. I'm in line to be the king of Holland or for some of you, the queen of Holland. Uh, either way, I am there because, uh, you know, although there are probably about a thousand or more, maybe close to a million ahead of me, but, you know, hey, who knows what might happen one day if I'm not here in church. You know I've gone off to lead the royal family or be part of the uh, uh, royal house of Holland. Well, along with that, we find out that there's something very comforting about knowing who we are and a little comforting to know where we've come from. Give me a little sense of history, a little sense of background, a little sense of heritage, a little sense of defining a little bit more about what shapes you, molds you, and makes you as we understand our cultural backgrounds. So I'm going to ask you today, who are you and where did you come from? For the beautiful passage of Scripture suggests this in its powerful truth, know ye not that ye are gods. Do you not know that you are gods? Wait, 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 you didn't know that? You didn't know that that's who you are? You didn't know that's where you came from? Well, obviously, if you did, this comes as a surprise to you, then you don't really know who you are and you don't know where you've come from because the scripture unfolds clearly for us this powerful truth and understanding. We need not use Ancestry.com. We need not go through some sort of historical pages. We need not consult with those who are Ancestry experts. We simply didn't need to know this, for the ancient truth is unfolded for us all through time. Know ye not? Did you not know that you are God? For the scripture invites us to know that you are created in the likeness and image of God. Something that is so easily passed over taken rather lightly is the idea that we are created as spiritual beings. We quite often want to look at our life constantly from the physical realm. We're caught up in the physical concepts of living this human life without realizing and focusing first and foremost above all other things. You're a spiritual being and you're created in that image and likeness of the divine. And you are a piece of this all creating source that we call the divine, we call God, we call our heavenly father, we call our divine source, we call so many beautiful names that we may refer to, higher power within our lives. You are a piece of that all creating source and that is known by so many names. And even though you may not be able to touch or sense or feel this divine source in this tangible way, I know that we must be part of this source because this is who we came from. We must be like this because this is what we came from. You're like God. That's where you came from. You're all heirs to a throne. That's right. You all may be kings and queens in this wonderful aspect of the divine heir that is you are, that you are open to, that you are there to receive in all the goodness and the greatness that the divine has instilled and prepared for you. When you realize that you must be like God because you're part of God. You must be part of God because you truly are like God when we realize our true essence. Know ye not that ye are gods is what the scriptural truth wants to unfold for us. Now, I'm Dutch. And meeting so many of my Dutch relatives, and going back to Holland, I had the opportunity of teaching at a girls' high school years ago. I had a chance to spend time with my cousins and my mother's uh, cousin in particular was a headmaster of the school, offered me the opportunity to come and teach. It was very interesting as I began to observe Dutch culture and began to learn more and more why I do some of the things I do and where it comes from. It comes from my Dutch upbringing. 
from my cultural upbringing, passed on from family to family, from through my mother unto me. There were so many things that I looked and said, well, wait a minute. Now I know why my mother did X, Y, and Z. Now I know why I do X, Y, and Z, partly because of this wonderful cultural background that we're part of. I saw that just as uh, I began to realize, you know, more and more of these habits and ways, well, they were passed down and they began to define a little bit more. I learned that something very powerful that uh, what every Dutchman has on his face, one thing, two lips. You'll get it. Okay. All right. So, you know, we learn a little bit about culture. We learn about background. We learn about something that is our heritage. And so it is as we're invited the same to realize the more we spend with the divine, the more time we spend with God, we realize this is where I came from and this is who I am the very essence of that divine, and we discover it unfolding within our lives. We wonder where this great compassion comes from. We wonder where this love comes from. We wonder where patience comes from. We wonder where all of the kindness comes from. We know that it's not always in operation, and there are times when we've forgotten, but when it does, where did it come from? How did you become so kind? How did you become so loving? How did you learn how to forgive? How did you become so gracious? Where did that wonderful patience come from in your life? Where did it all come from? It comes from the divine. It comes from the essence of God. It becomes from that which is innately instilled within us, our true nature. We're created in the image and the likeness. And that's what we see unfolding within our lives. Because when we understand that everything in this material world must be like what it came from, that includes each and every one of us, must be like what it came from. You ever have a piece of cake? And you wonder, where did this cake come from? Well, it came from the larger cake, right? And everything, every delicious morsel, every aspect of that piece of cake is found in the greater cake, right? So when we realize this, we're understanding this very concept that we are all aspects of the divine. We're all sparks of the divine. We're all the creation of the divine. And that goodness of God is in you and you and you waiting for us to just allow it to rise up and unfold in wonderful ways. A small amount of blood drawn from a person tells the doctors about the entire blood supply, right? They can just take a small amount and they can do a test and they can tell you everything about the blood that flows through your entire body because it is drawn from the place where it came from. So it's like the place it came from, just as you and I from the divine it illustrates over and over again this is who you are this is where you came from suddenly there's a different realization that comes to our life wow i am created in the image and likeness of god i am a revelation of the divine i am so much more than i thought i was in this world of simplicity and this physical world of limitation i realize the divine of infinite possibilities is who i am Infinite wisdom constantly is available to unfold for me because that's what God is. And I am from God. You wonder where you came from? We think about, well, we came from that wonderful honeymoon night of our mom and dad where they spent some little romance, a little whatever. No, you came from the divine. You came from God. That physical body, that physical form came from that conception. But you yourself, are part of that formless, that wonderful energy, that wonderful intellect, that wonderful loving presence, the wonderful grace, the wonderful unlimited forgiveness that we call divine, we call God. That's where you came from. So since I came from this invisible energy source that some call God, I must be just like that. I came from spirit, so my true essence must be then just like that. I'm a divine piece of God. So turn to someone and say, you are a piece of God. Uh Uh-huh. That's right. Make sure you cut that clearly. You're a piece of God. That's right. Uh Uh-huh. Exactly. That's who we are, and it's time for us to proclaim that and aware that one another in this room, that's who you are. I know who you are, and I know where you've come from because you are a piece of the whole, piece of the goodness, piece of the grace, a piece of the compassion, a piece of all that is of God. You are a spiritual being connected to this divine source. 
So if you are God, what does this imply? It means, number one, you have power. That's right. You're not powerless in this world because you are like the divine. You came from the divine. You are a piece of the divine. So that same power that you look to God to manifest in the world is already found within you. You just have to awaken. It means that you have authority. That you have authority to claim. You have authority to speak. You have authority to uh, announce and uh, express the very desires of your heart. For God is the creative force that spoke all into existence, and you're a part of that. You have an authority. It means that you're not ordinary. That's right. You're something very special. God is not of the ordinary brand. God is of this infinite possibilities and so extraordinary, and so are you, because that's where you came from. It means that you're supernatural. That means not just confined to this physical realm, but that your essence, the true spirit of who you are, is supernatural, moving in the realm of the spirit. And that's where you are truly to manifest and to live out the highest and best for you. John chapter 10, verse 34, Jesus answered them and said, Is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. It was in the ancient law of the Jews. It was in the ancient teaching, and we read a text from the psalmist. It's echoed over and over again. Something a lot of people would say, wait a minute, it's kind of blasphemous for you to say you're God. But you're a revelation. You're the hands of God, the feet of God, the voice of God, the presence of God, the light of God. You're all those things. You are God, is what Scripture is saying, in revelation for us. There are those who saw Jesus, and he began to proclaim, I am, the I am within me, the God within me is being revealed. I am the Son of God. Whoa, this is craziness. And the Jews began to gather around him and said, let's make sure that this man is put to death. Let's stone him. And in their desire to grab up stones and pick up stones, as Jesus confronted them and said, what have I done? What is so blasphemous? For someone to acknowledge this passage and this ancient teaching that all along was passed down, for me to say, I am the child of God. I am the son of God. Because that's exactly what Jesus was teaching and inviting you to awaken to. Awaken to this wonderful awareness that you are the child of God and even more so an understanding that you're the son of God. It's not gender specific. You want to say, well, I'm a woman. How can I be the son? The son referring to that firstborn. You know how it is. The firstborn gets everything. You know, look at the royal family. It is the firstborn of the royal family that's going to inherit the throne. It's not number two. It's not number three, not number four. It's not any of those that are passed down in that lineage. It's the firstborn that's heir to the throne. And Jesus is calling you the very firstborn. You are a son. You are the heir. You are the firstborn. And all that is afforded to you of the divine is available. So awaken to this truth. And Jesus began to try to teach this to the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they became so frustrated. No, no, no. No one has that power. No one has that ability. No one has that grace. No one has that goodness. No, it's not possible. Do not quote. That's blasphemous. It's only God. Yet, Jesus spoke constantly of the divine within us. The kingdom of heaven is within. Speaking constantly of the presence of God in us, through us, around us, and for us. Understanding that it's all available to each and every one, no matter who you are. 1 John chapter 2, 6 says, whoever says he, um, the example of Christ's consciousness, abides in him ought to walk in the same way. So whoever says that they are the example, we need to follow that example and walk in the same way. And Jesus invited everyone to be a teacher saying, walk this way. That's right. Walk this way. This is how you walk. This is how you move. This is how you operate. This is how it's done. My daughter was Miss Georgia, and she spent a lot of time learning how to walk. Now, wait a minute. Learning how to walk? Didn't she learn how to walk when she was a little child? Didn't she learn how to put her feet one foot in front of the other one? Didn't she know how to operate and move through this world as a little kid? And now she's spending time as Miss Georgia learning how to walk? To walk in a way that was poise and beauty. Follow. So she had a walking coach. 
Can you believe that? Walk this way. Uh huh. Learning how to walk. She had to walk this way. And even more so, how to walk in high heels. And you had to walk a certain way, how to do it, how to demonstrate it, how to walk in poise and beauty and in grace and in style. And Jesus said the same thing. I'm showing you how to walk. This is the fashion walk. This is the model walk. This is the beauty walk. This is the poise walk. This is how you walk and look like God. That's right. And so I demonstrated for you and I ask you to walk this way. Follow this way. Proclaim in a full awareness, you are God's. For the divine presence is alive within you, waiting to be unfolded for the world to experience. Let's just see what else the Bible has to say about this, because again, people are still struggling. Wait a minute. I'm not so sure, Pastor, that I identify as God. God's that distant thing way up in the heavens. God's that thing that's, you know, we go to, we beg, plead, and beseech. We hope to awaken. We hope that, it, you know, we can please enough that it won't withhold good things from us. That's what God is. I'm not that. Unfortunately, we have this crazy idea of who and what God is. We get a little confused. But we see here in Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, And the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made thee a God. I've made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Wait a minute. The very spirit of God, the very voice of God, the very teaching of God is saying to Moses, I have made you a God. In other words, what he's saying is, I've given you all the authority and all the power, all the ability, all the dominion, all the strength, all the insight, all the guides. Ah, you have it all. Hello, would you wake up and have know that I have made you this? Now, this is so important because Moses was one of these timid, struggling, insecure, afraid, not so confident kind of guys. He was one of those who just said, you know, I'm not a really good spokesman. Don't put me up front. Don't really make me be the shining star. I'm really not cut out for this. This is not who I am. And here the very voice of God is saying, I have made you a God before the prophet. What does that mean? It means that, you know, you are this wonderful power and presence, that your Pharaoh can be anyone who is oppressing you. You are the God and the victor. Your Pharaoh is anything that's enslaving you, that's holding you in bondage. And you are the God that is the one called out to be demonstrating the power and victory over anything. You are the Pharaoh, or your Pharaoh is anything or anyone reinforcing bondage in your life. Pharaoh is anything that does not want you to go. And you have been made a God unto your Pharaoh. Whatever is holding you back, you've already been made, the scripture says as a divine presence of power and authority, having insight, wisdom, and knowledge. Whatever's holding you back, you need to rise up and say, this is who I am, and this is where I came from. I know who I am, and I know I'm a divine expression of God. I know I have the power and presence. I know I have all the love and grace. I know I have all the things that I needed. That I may speak to every one of the pharaohs in my life that hold me in bondage. I am free to move. I may speak that all the powers of pharaohs that we see in our world that are oppressing us at school, at house, at work, wherever it may be, at home, wherever it may be in our lives, we realize that there is a power and presence that's within us. But why does the Bible describe you, you, as God? Wait a minute. We said this Bible is describing Moses as God. But isn't it true? Every Bible character is us. And that's how we read the Bible, because it's our story not just ancient history. It's our story. So we put ourselves in every story and we find, wait a minute, God is making Moses uh, a God unto Pharaoh. God is saying, John, I've made you a God unto the Pharaohs of your world and your life today. The challenges, those obstacles, those things are holding you back. I want you to understand this, that your afflictions must bow to you, that you have the power to silence those pharaohs that are holding you back, that you are stronger than any obstacle you may face, and that you are above every one of the challenges. That's why. That's why the Bible is written the way it is, to get this message across. And our work then is to begin to understand our original nature. We must come in alignment with then, I know who I am, this is who I am. Well. I better start acting like I who I am. There's a little group of children who were asked by their teacher 
their Sunday school teacher. What is God? What is God like? Well, you know, that was a big question they began to talk about. And so what does God do? Well, you know, and if you were God, if you were God, what would you do? Oh, I'd make sure everyone had a peanut butter jelly sandwich, my kid said. I'd make sure, well, okay, if you're God, go ahead. Well, where, and the kids would say, well, I, I, if I were God, this is what I would do. I would be very kind and loving. If I were God, I'd be very gracious. If I were God, all these wonderful things that the children begin to describe, they're available to us and a calling for us to reveal, to manifest, to demonstrate in the world around us. Ye are gods because God created you in his image and that you have then these attributes of God. Yes, you can make a peanut butter sandwich for everybody. You could make that, you could provide, you could bless, you could do these things. Why? Because the same power that is in that of this great universe, you came from it and you are it. You are the aspect of it. You are the revelation of it. And when we realize that, we go, wow. There's a lot of things I could do in this world, couldn't I? If I really realized who I am and where I came from. You are God's because you are God's child. You are God's because you are God's son. You are God's because you're the representative of God on earth. And you are God's because you're the heir apparent. And you are God's when people see you. They should see God in you, through you, and around you. And you are God's because you are God's lookalike. Now, it doesn't mean that God has this nose, oh, heaven forbid, or that God has these ears or this lack of hair or amount of hair or whatever it may be. It means that you are the character, the very essence and the revelation. You look like God. In, it means that you are the mirror of God. It means God is in you. It means that then you realize that the greatness of God is there for you to demonstrate and manifest. And one of the most exciting things about this is that God is love. God is love. Don't you love that? Wow! That means we're love too. And that means when we understand that we're where we came from and who we are, the greatest word that describes and sums it all up is that we are love. Jesus said, who does not love does not know God, for God is love. You don't love, I guess we don't know God. But if we know to know God, it means to know that we just genuinely, completely, unreservedly, with, effort, with limited effort and with great ease, we love. So we begin knowing God, who is love, and we allow that love to throw through us. I want to tell you this, at every thought that is not loving, moves us away from where we came from. It takes us away from understanding who we are. When we have these thoughts that are not loving and not engaging in love or demonstrating love in any way whatsoever, we're moving away from this truth that we've worked so hard to attain, to understand, to grasp. We're going in the wrong direction. So it's really important that we understand this, that we say this God I'm a piece of, I'm a part of, I'm a revelation of. This is who I am and where I've come from is this great love that we live, we demonstrate, and we show to the world. So the question we should be asking is, am I living like God right now? Am I living like God right now? I mean, if I walk down the street, would someone say, oh, there went God. Oh, look at that. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Right. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But that's where they should be because that's our revelation. That's who we are and where we've come from. We should be this as we begin then by starting to make a shift in our thoughts and our actions, shifting to all that we imagine God to be. And that's how we walk in this world. That's how we move in this world. That's how we operate in this world. That's how we become the light for the world. Now, know ye not that ye are God? Well, you do now. You should now. You should be able to understand this, and that's our solution. That's our answer. It's how we live and how we move and have our being, that we know who we are and where we've come from. And then we begin to understand, now I know why. Now I know how. Now I know who. And now I know where to begin. I know I am God.
アメン